Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Today's video is sponsored by Timu, and I'd like to thank them for offering my viewers a $100 coupon bundle when you use the code on the screen. And all the links to the products that I'm showing you today will also be down in my description box. The first products that I'm going to show you are these ribbons. I got three different styles and I think this one is really pretty. It has the orange pumpkins, it's wired and a little bit of greenery and then a buffalo check pattern for the background. And then I got this orange and black buffalo check and I think you can guess what that looks like. But this one now that I'm opening is really pretty. These are a lot brighter than what I'm used to. That first one would be something that I would use normally, but these other two, not quite sure. But look at the pattern on it. It's really cute. It has a nice vibrant pumpkins and the black and white buffalo check, which I love. So let's create some decor with this ribbon. I'm cutting it in about a 12 inch section and I'm going to need eight of them. And that's going to cover all eight ribs of this wired pumpkin that you see here. To start, I cut a slit in the very top of the ribbon so I could fold it over on one side of the rib and then just glue it on top of itself. I did the same thing for the second piece of ribbon. Then I flipped the pumpkin frame upside down and I put a little bit of hot glue on the ribbon at the bottom and now what I'm going to do is just center that into the rib and then fold over the ribbon and just glue it in place. I left the ribbon with a little bit of slack because I wanted to be able to adjust it and get the rib part right in the center of the ribbon and I'll just use some hot glue to push it down onto the ribbon. Let's take a look at how I did that one more time. I'm going to repeat these steps until I have all the wire covered. I'm going to do something different with the pumpkin stem. So I'm taking my wire cutters and just cutting off the top part of the stem. I have a wood piece from my garden and that's what I'm going to use as my pumpkin stem. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that it kind of fits in between and then I decided to just bend the wires down towards each other in the center and that would give the stem something to hold on to. Sorry that it's hard for you to see what I'm doing but I'm adding some hot glue in between the wire and the stem and then I'm adding more hot glue on top of the stem so it all bonds together. I'll also add some glue where the stem meets the ribbon fabric in the front and the back. This is what the pumpkin looks like so far and I think it turned out pretty nice. Next, I'm going to be adding some of this boxwood, which was also a find from Timu, and I'm going to be gluing sprigs of it in between all of these ribbons. So just to fill in the gap a little bit, I'll be using a lot of hot glue and I'll be gluing each of the sprigs in about two or three different areas. Then to connect them together, I'll glue the end of one to the top of the other and then make sort of like a garland all the way up the pumpkin seam. I made sure to take my time and wait till the glue and the leaves had dried before I moved on to adding the next piece. I continued adding the greenery in between each of the ribbons. And when I got down towards the sides, 
I stopped going all the way up to the top. I just wanted it to have more of a whimsical look, and I think it turned out pretty cute. For the final touch to this pumpkin, I made a really big, fluffy, black and white buffalo check bow, and I'm just going to glue that right onto the stem, a little bit off to the side. Then I'll just fluff it up, and this project is complete. Next, I picked out some pillowcases. I've got one that's sort of a farmhouse look and then one that's more of a Halloween look. This one is a farmhouse truck, but unfortunately, you can't see the front part of the truck. However, I still think it's a good price for the quality of the pillowcase. Just buying a zipper alone at a fabric store is probably anywhere from $7 to $10. So getting a pillowcase that's already got the zipper in it and a pretty pattern, although, you know, sort of a cutoff pattern, it's still going to look cute. Here's the next one, and this is a sweet little spooky gnome. He's got his little bat and he's got his cauldron of bubbly witch's brew and then the spooky and spiders and bats and a spider web. I think this one is really sweet. So I'm really happy with this one. Let's take a look at what they look like out on my porch. This next piece is a metal sign. Again, the colors are a little bright, but I'm sticking with my theme of black and white buffalo check and all of the pumpkin designs. Now, I was a little disappointed that this was bent in the packaging, so not too happy about that. But let's take a look at what I do with this one. I took a ruler and I marked where a straight line would be coming from the front to the back. And I'm just gonna take my utility knife and give it a score on the back and also on the front. Now you have to be careful with this because it's kinda slippery. I did lose my ruler a couple of times. All I did next was gently bend up the end portion to make this sign stand up. Now the scoring really helped me to get a straight edge at the bottom, but you don't have to do that if you don't want. This is a pretty flexible piece of tin. I grabbed a wooden block from out of my stash, added a whole bunch of hot glue to it, and then glued it down on top of the folded up piece of metal. And that is going to be just enough weight to hold this in place so it can stand up on its own. One thing that Timu has lots of are these garden flags. And I think they're a really quick and easy way to display something in your yard or even in your home. This is a fun little jack-o'-lantern with a lantern hanging above it. So I think this one is pretty cute. This next one is definitely more my style. It's a hanging flag as well. I love the polka dotted pumpkin in the muted rusty tones and the welcome is a beautiful farmhouse style. I think I'll be making this into a pillow simply by opening up one of the seams either at the top or the bottom and then putting some stuffing into it. It's also a garden flag but I think I'm going to repurpose this into something new. When I first looked at this one, 
I forgot that I had ordered this table runner. Again, black and white buffalo check. It's my absolute favorite. And this has a spooky little truck at the end of each of the ends of the table runner. And this truck, you can see the whole thing of it. And it says trick or treat. And it's got these diamond pattern pumpkins and some polka dot pumpkins and bats. And I think this is just super cute. Now, I don't normally decorate for Halloween, but I'll show you what the table runner looks Looks like on my table. This next product is actually a bath mat and the design I chose looked really nice on screen but I'm not too impressed with how it looks now that I have it at home. It's really soft and cuddly so it would be a bath mat. You could use it maybe in the kitchen or by your front door but I don't know that this would stand the test of time. However, for the cost of $7.48 Canadian to use this for a couple months out of the year, I think would be just fine. They also have some different designs, so make sure you check out the links down in my description box. This is another item that I chose, and I really loved the look of them when I saw them online. They are really beautiful with the colors, the gold and the reddish sort of rusty color, and I thought they would be really pretty to use in a wreath or just in. Here's how they came packaged, all scrunched together and they're fabric. So a bunch of them are wrinkled. They'd have to probably be ironed. And I'm not even sure if that would work because they're just glued onto each of the stems. Now the stems are wired, so you'd be able to kind of push it apart and, and place them. But I think the packaging could have been a lot nicer on this product. And I'm really disappointed with the quality of these. Moving on to something that I was really excited about. This is a 60 piece set of double sided markers. They have a fine tip and a wide tip. Look at all the beautiful colors. You can actually choose from up to, I think, 240 different colors. So these are really fun and I can't wait to start using them. So let's see what I can do with these. In one of my last videos, I told you guys that it's really bothersome for me to paint all of these little wood craft pieces. I love creating them so people can have them as craft kits, but they're not my favorite thing to do. So having these markers has made this process so much easier for me. This is one of the many colors of green that comes in this pack. I think there's about five or six different colors of each. So blue, green, yellows, browns, black. They're really nice. And I love that you can still see a little bit of the wood grain through because that's my rustic coming out in me. So this is a brand new craft kit that I have available right now up on my Etsy shop. So if you're interested, head on over there and order one for yourself. So I'm not going to make you watch me color all of these in. I think you get the idea. But I did want to just show you the little bat that I did and all of the beautiful, vibrant colors that come in this set. So out of everything that I received from Timu, I think this has to be my favorite. And I'll definitely be purchasing these again. I also chose these tiny little mini pumpkins. They're perfect for little fillers, or you can add them to your projects. Here's a look at some of the other items that I got from Timu. This is a nice Mr. Spray bottle, and I thought that would be really great for crafting. I use zip ties around the house all the time and I definitely can use these in black. It's a bag of 250 and these are the 10 inch, but they're also available in other lengths as well. For my laundry room, I got two of these cup holder things where you just snap them onto the actual laundry detergent or fabric softener and you, then you set your cup down and you don't get any drippies. I'm really excited about trying these. This next item I'm really excited to try 
and I don't have it for you in this video, but I will probably throw out a short the first time I use it, just so you can see how it works. It's a hamburger or an egg circle frying pan, and I think this is the cutest thing. I'll be able to do little sandwiches in here. I tend to use cheese a lot instead of bread because I'm trying to follow a keto lifestyle. You've got to unscrew it and then screw on the handle, and I'll definitely let you know how this works. Last but not least, I got a pair of these wall brackets and they're metal. You can see that they just pop open so they're collapsible if you need them to be. You put that side on the wall and then the long part is for the shelf and they have the hole so you can attach the bracket to the wall and the shelf. So it's going to be really sturdy. I can use these in my craft room or in the garage. Here's a quick look at the Timu website. I like to go on my computer. It just gives me a bigger view, but they also have an app that you can use for your mobile device. Don't forget that Timu is offering a $100 coupon bundle when you use my code, which is on the screen right now or down in the description box. And you've got to make sure that you get on the Timu app on your mobile device. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and the subscribe button. I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye for now.